Welcome back. We ordered up a 11 inch RV roof vent for our bus. A little ventilated and it gets, uh, when it's parked and when we're cooking, it get a little hot in there. I picked out this one because it was less money than the most popular Max fan that everyone seems to uh, buy, but let's see what's in this. What I did want was a light built-in, which this one has. LED lights around the rim. And a programmable digital remote with a screen. The older version did not have the screen and everyone gave bad reviews about it. This one has a new uh, digital display on it so you could set when you want your thermostat to open and close your fan. Removable screen. That's good. And I ordered the one with the white top. Did not want the smoke top. Let's give this thing a test. We have it hooked up to a booster box. Got a remote. Ten speeds, let's slow it down. Low speed is very quiet. We have a light switch for the remote. Let's see if that works. Yes, we have lights. There is a rain sensor. We have it turned on or off. I'm going to turn it on and we could set temperature we wanted to turn on and run at. Let's, uh, let's turn it down again. Let's shut it off. Our room temperature is 88 right now. Let's set the temperature down lower and see if it kicks on. So we have to hit auto. No. Rain sensor is on. Let's uh, test that. Now, I think there was a lock button for the rain sensor. You could turn it off. So if it rains, it'll still keep running. We'll turn it off. And the rain sensor is just a little metal thing over here. When it makes a connection across it, it should shut down. Let's see if it works. Yes. I do not know if it will turn back on when it dries off. I do not think it will, but we'll find out eventually. Change direction. Air in now, okay. I'm probably never gonna use air in. Probably always just be sucking air out. And they had micro open. Let me see if it opens. All right. Just a little bit. That's pretty good. Can I run the fan on that too? I would think I should. No, it closed on me. I'm getting confused. Micro open. Yeah, it's running out. We are going to be relocating our turtle. He is hiding a speaker hole. When I relocated the speaker and previously pulled the wire already through there to in anticipation for installing a fan. Did not want to put it in the top of the center. I am six foot four. The bus is six feet tall, so my head will be brushing along over here. I do not want anything sticking down at all. And plus, it's not really flat. The very peak of the roof, there's a peak on the top of it. We have a flat area here on the roof on the outside. We are going to remove our turtle. The hole may come out to here. Got an 11 inch square hole we need to cut. And we're going to adjust kind of the best location for aft. I don't want it too far out or too far in. So let's get our uh, turtle out of the way first. We'll put him somewhere else because I like him. 
the depth on this thing is a little more than an inch with the knob over there sticking out that's like two inches hopefully it won't be bumping my head but let's see how much thickness we have on our roof there's the roof surface right there so oh just about a little over two inches really that should be fine. If it was going to be too shallow, I was going to make a spacer to space it off of the roof. But now we just got to make sure there's nothing in our way when we cut a bigger hole. And I think from last time I poked around, there's not. We got to be careful we don't cut our wire, obviously. There's some other wire here too. Oh, that's speaker wire. I got to watch those. That's running to the speaker over there. All those come across and down. Well, let's figure out how to cut a hole in our roof. I took a spring-loaded center punch and made a bunch of uh, hits on it right into the center of this hole. So now I'm going to go up on the roof and actually see where it dented up to nowhere by uh, I could center this thing. Oh, it's hard to make out, but I could see the dent out right there. So we will mark that and determine how uh, where our opening is going to go. We want it to be on a nice flat area. So let me put a little X on that and get our template up here. I cut out a cardboard template. It doesn't come with one, you gotta make it. I traced the uh, interior piece first and then opened it up a little bit bigger so it'll slide over that. That's the size we need. It's a little bit more than 11 inches square. We got our template somewhat centered on here, but if you could see, that's gonna be little too uneven over here. We try to screw that thing down. So we're gonna have to kind of slide this up a little further to a more uh, flatter spot before the curve. That probably would be more like it. So let's take a few measurements and then go inside and see how it's gonna lay out. It's more important how it's gonna fit on the inside than up here. So I got plenty of uh, real estate to move around on up here before we get into the ribs that are here. And this is clear all the way up to that. We taped our template on the inside. That's pretty flat there. It should probably work out. That's our measurement. It was seven and a half inches from here to the center of the hole. So kind of leaning towards more center of the bus. This probably will work. I may adjust the location fore and aft. Let me see. It's kind of centered right in between this uh, panel right here. It may work. I don't want to be bumping my head on anything if I'm bending it over to get down to the fridge. But I don't think it's going to stick out that much anyway. The little knob that's going to be spinning will be right here. Template all laid out. We took measurements off the seam over here to here to make sure it was square. Measurements from down on the rib over here up to make sure it was nice and square. So we're about uh, seven and three quarter inches. We bumped it up that way a little bit more. Now I'm gonna drill four holes in the corner. We gotta watch for our wires that are running through over here. And I'm either gonna run a saw or a set of tin snips. I do not know yet, but we'll figure out what works best. Oh, the first cut is the deepest. <laughs> And we're stuck on insulation. This skin is all aluminum. I'm not sure how thick it is here, but it drills nice and easy. Poking around more inside, there is a beam that runs right across over here. So we're just gonna clear it. I'm tapping on that right there, so. I don't know what it holds. I think it's just a reinforcement to tie in all the structure together. Cause like I said, everything on here is aluminum. The end caps on the front and the rear are fiberglass. So that's probably just adding some strength to the roof structure. We will clear that, drill some more holes. Hole saw a bit, cut one uh, bigger hole over there. And we're gonna attempt to cut with just some tin snips. That seems to work. Probably have to just drill out these boom, four corners and connect the dots nice and quiet so I don't wake up my neighbors in the morning. I ended up doing the whole thing with tin snips. I could have ran a jigsaw or an abrasive saw, it'd be really noisy. It's early in the morning. And also, 
with the jigsaw will get stuck. Anytime you drill into this, it wraps around the drill bit. So this worked out well. You have to cut open the rest of our insulation and then drop the fan in and see how it's going to fit. Pass me the razor blade. Thank you, thing. Insulation is all cut out and removed. That's that other brace I was talking about right in here. It's like a heavy steel channel. Clear that, no problem. This was our speaker wire, so we have to shove it out of the way so we don't catch it with any screws. And now we'll uh, fit that in the hole. Hope it fits. Very good. Sits nice and flat up there. On this side, it's a little bit up. We'll make that up with the caulking and the ceiling. We won't over tighten these screws too much. There's provisions for more screws. We're just gonna go with what they have there. There's like eight on it. And there's four screws on the bezel on the inside, but they only gave me nine screws that came with the thing. So they screwed me. I'm a little short on screws. So we use our own up here, probably tech screws. Fan is sitting up there, a little knob, motorized knob is clearing the ceiling here too, so that'll be up high. Now we need to cut the trim in here now. So how to get the size of the hole we need. I'm gonna pull the fan back out. I'm gonna go from the top and I'm gonna drill holes in the corner where they are. And then we'll come down here and connect the dots with our uh, tin snips. Just eyeballed down on all the four corners to get our little dots right see them right there we'll go inside and connect the dots there's our holes around we could actually make this just a little bit smaller I'm gonna put some tape around here to connect the dots and then we will uh, just go with the tin snips and open the rest of this hole up to the big box that it needs to be let there be light Ooh, nice clouds all right we got our tape lines up we will start just cutting and uh, enlarging our hole with the tin snips Get a nice clean cut. We got our interior hole all cut out. Now we gotta go uh, screw this thing down and seal it up to the roof. We'll make our connections over here. And then the bezel gets slid in. We're gonna have to trim that to get it to flush mount, so. Let's get this installed first and hooked up and running. We are using more tight sealing compound. I put some a little aluminum spacers in here, two of them, because where it sits on this edge, it's a little bit higher. So we'll flip this over and we're gonna screw it down with some tech screws and then we're gonna seal everything up real well when we're done. We got our wiring hooked up. All units screwed to the roof securely around. We gotta seal it up later. We got our jumper box hole. We're running it right now. Let's turn it on. Power. And we have no fan speed, so let's bump it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's really not that loud on full speed. Kick it down. The blue wire is to go to the braking system of your vehicle. I imagine when you turn on the brakes or step on the brakes, it'll power this thing off. But we're going to leave it just unhooked. Let's kick it off. And the vent should stay open until you want it closed. Let's close it now. The vent is white, but it looks red through there. That's weird. I went around and measured all the places here for the bezel to see how much I had to cut it. And according to my measurements, I shouldn't have to. This is only 
three inches, so it should clear. I think it was hung, hanging up along this top edge. We trimmed that back a little bit. I trimmed a little bit more metal over here so this wire wouldn't get hung on. I'm gonna put a little piece of tape around the edge of this so there's no sharp edges that this could potentially rub on. And it should go back up. We got a fight with this uh, insulation too that was uh, keeps wanting to get stuck in the cover assembly. To make the bezel sit flush here, since the ceiling's got a little bit of a curve to it, I put some foam in here to space it out, pull those edges down, just on these two sides. And we could screw this thing off. Got the bezel on. What are we reading here? It says it's 88 degrees in here now. Let's turn on auto. Set at 80, all right, there we go. No fan speed, so let's see what we need. Air out. I'm gonna leave that running. Sealed everything up, covered the screw heads. We just used white silicone. Lifetime guarantee. I'm gonna test that out. We got our power coming from the fuse box. Smallest fuse I had lying around was seven and a half amps. That'll be fine for this. Probably a little bit too big. I'm not even really sure of how many amps it draws, but we relocated our turtle. He's up on the wall now by the bathroom. This thing has been up and running for a while already now. And uh, what speed are we at here? It is pretty quiet. We are on third speed right now. It's kind of cloudy today. We're still making voltage on our solar, 12.6 volts. I don't know if the refrigerator is on right now. I don't think so. I don't hear it running. It's been uh, managing uh, pretty well. The only issue I had was with the automatic feature on this to open and close. I have yet to see it operate the way I think it should. The directions are very basic. Unless I'm missing something, I'm going to send an email off to a hike crew and see what they have to say. Some people have complained about the blue LED at night. To me, it's not a problem. It's not over my bed. Uh, you be the judge. Here's my response from them. Never got one. Well... So take that with a grain of salt. If you want to purchase this, you may not get any customer support. I will attempt again to reach out to them. They have a phone number I haven't tried calling. It's doing what I needed to do at this point. So I am not disappointed. I just wish it would work the way they said it would work. So if you like this video, do me a favor, like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. How do you like your sandwich? Dark, crispy. medium, crispy? All right. More butter. It's not raw!